Oh boy, here we go. It has been a while, though for anyone who's been keeping up with the new videos on the channel, it's not going to look like any time has passed at all. But yeah, uh, I have not been behind the camera in a couple of months at this point. <laughs> Just a little bit on how the sausage is made, I guess. Uh, also, you may notice the audio quality is a little different this time around. That's because I am using a Bluetooth microphone. My hope is that it won't pick up as much background noise. I'll be able to talk a little bit more freely. The audio won't distort as I get further away from and closer to the camera. And I just think overall, It'll be better, while at the same time not adding a ton more work and obnoxiousness to my process, so uh, everybody wins. Anyway, here we have TFC Toys Leviathan. This is a figure I've been wanting to make a video on for a while, because I got this guy much earlier in 2022, wanted to make a video, and just never got around to it. But as you can tell, this is Ripper Snapper. And I have this weird affinity for Ripper Snapper. He's, I guess, my favorite Terracon, probably because Shark. But yeah, uh, there he is. And this guy is interesting. He's got kind of that weird anime robot texture aesthetic that TFC's been doing a lot lately, which I don't mind. Um, also, I've got his gun mounted on his back here, which we'll just take that off for now, but there's a little like little slots on the back, tab on the top of the gun. You just peg it in like that, and that gives him like a shark-mounted artillery cannon, I guess. And just for the heck of it, we'll pull out this little tab, and that will be his proper gun when he gets to robot mode. But we're not talking about the robot mode, we are talking about his land shark mode, and this thing is very cool with one thing that I'm not super fond of. Uh, but like I said, it's got kind of that techno-organic, super robot-y, anime robot style texture that TFC's been doing a lot. You can see some like pistons and almost like robotic tendons in the leg that have been painted in red that stand out on the blue really nicely. And big silver claws, lots of little texture details along back here. Some of it painted, some of it not. He's got his little shark claw tail, which does have a little bit of movement to it. Not a ton, but can go up and down and a little bit left to right. And of course you have some of the more painted details up front and stuff. Uh, something that I think is interesting to note, um, I, like many people, do not like translucent plastic on figures, but it doesn't bother me here. For a couple reasons. One, this translucent plastic feels better than the standard translucent plastic that we get on like uh, mainline release transformers. It feels a little bit thicker, a little bit sturdier, and also it's not really used for any important stuff. It's just a few minor details here and there, like these little accent fins on the side, the back fin here, the main fin up top here, and then there are some translucent red or pink bits right towards the top of the head, some translucent blue just behind the head. So they're more accents. They're not important bits. They stand out from the rest of the figure, which I think makes it work much better because I think it looks pretty okay, and it doesn't seem like something where I'd have to worry about the structural stability. Now, the thing that I'm not super fond of with this figure is the shark face. I don't mind the overall look of the thing. I think the shape is nice. I kind of like this little bit that comes down and juts out, almost like mandibles or almost like the shark is wearing some kind of battle helmet. That's fine. I like the pink eyes. I like the silver on the face, the nose gills. I don't know. The thing that bugs me about this is the pink teeth. I'm not really a fan of the pink teeth. I feel like, I don't know, I just think it would look better if they went silver all the way down or possibly like a grayish color or something. The pink is just a little bit, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. I don't hate it, it's just my least favorite aspect to the shark mode. 
But other than that, it is cool. I like that they kind of went a little bit cartoonish with the proportions, where he's got very, very big feet, very, very scrawny legs. Makes him nice and stable. And he yeah, has his little grabby claws. Now, I suppose I should talk about articulation since he does have it. I mentioned the tail. The mouth can open and close. That is all you can do with the head. The arms can rotate and can go in and out a little bit because of a ball joint in the shoulder. There is an elbow and a wrist that goes up and down. The thumb doesn't move, but each of the three fingers are individually pinned at the base. So you get one joint per finger. And it's not bad. It's pretty cool. I think it's reasonably expressive. My only thing is I kind of wish you could swivel the wrist. But you can't. And I mean, I kind of understand why. It's a pretty thin joint. I do wish this could clip or lock in place somehow, because it's easy to bump out of place, but it's also pretty easy to put back in place. As for the back legs, those can go in and out a decent bit. They can rotate forward and back. You also get what basically amounts for a thigh swivel, though you don't get a whole lot of rotation going around this way. It's mostly going in. There is a knee, there is a forward and backward ankle, you also get ankle tilts, and then the heel can go up and down, and the foot or toes can go up and down. So, pretty decently poseable little shark mode. I don't know, I just think it's fun. This guy is nifty. Um, I guess I should also mention this. You can technically go out with these arms if you unpeg them from the body, but if you go out far, then it kind of looks ridiculous. So yeah, Leviathan, pretty neat. I was going to say little shark mode, but it's not really that little. Eh, let's pull this back just a little bit. But as you can see, Leviathan is pretty decently sized when compared to some mainline releases. And uh, yes, downshift is gone. I am phasing out downshift, by which I mean spontaneously getting rid of him entirely. And downshift is now replaced with Legacy uh, Velocitron Burnout, because Burnout's really cool. And also, I was just kind of getting tired of using Downshift. But yes, here you can see how Leviathan stacks up with everybody. Now, I don't have any of the other TFC Terracons. I did have Cutthroat briefly, but due to space and money constraints and also not having any interest whatsoever in getting the full combiner, I ended up selling them off. So I just have Leviathan as far as the TFC Terracons go. Though I am interested in Hunger, whatever that one's going to be called. I guess we'll see how that ends up looking, because currently it's still just a sketch up for pre-order on Show Z, but we'll see. Okay, transformation time. So let's raise this up in a little bit. And now, um, obviously, I, I guess not obviously, but if you're familiar with the channel, you probably know to expect that I'm not going to go into the combined mode here, because I want to look at this guy as his own standalone figure, and I guess spoilers, but his, as a standalone figure, this guy's really good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to do the combined mode, which I would think would be obvious because I just said I don't intend to do the combiner anyway. But yeah, so to start, I'm just going to close the mouth, get the front arms out of the way, and we're going to start with the tail. So I want to pop this apart. You can see where they kind of peg in in the center there. They kind of overlap. So pop the tail apart, and then pop the tail apart. And now these bits will swing up, just kind of get out of the way. And while we're here, we're also going to push the little spiky tail tips back in. Let's just do that. And now I'm going to come to the underside here and open up this bit here, which should allow us to untap these panels from the sides here. Now we can separate what will become the legs. And I also want to pull these panels out of the way. Push that down. So swing that out, 
push that down, and that will give us the room we need to swing the legs out. So we're going to start here, just kind of pull this out, and probably hear the ratchets even through the, uh, the microphone. <laughs> Got some good ratchety knees. Get that out. And now we can turn this into robot legs. So, gonna unpeg the shark thigh. Just swing that back for now. Swing this up and swing this in. And this will tab in here. Next, gonna swing the tail chunk out of the way so that we can pop this silver bit off. Pry that off. There we go. And with that pried off, this can swing up, and this section down here will also accordion out. And then this swings all the way down like that. Now this will swing back in and swing down. And then here, this bit, like getting the tail bits situated is a little bit tricky, but just swing that in, swing that around, and this will slide down and swing in and peg into the knee, and this comes down and just kind of sits in the leg like that. So I think this one, you want to bring it up like that because there's this little curve there that this little joint will sit in. And bring this in, and this will peg in here and here. You can see the little slots on the uh, shin piece. And nope, that doesn't want to work. Okay. This is the most challenging part of all of this, figuring out which orientation to put the little tail bits to uh, get everything to play nice. There we go. Okay. Now that is all clipped together. Now for the shark leg, want to rotate it here, bring it down at the knee, and like all the way, and then swing it in, and it'll just kind of sit in that cavity in the leg. And now this comes in, and this bit will peg into the shark thigh, and that will lock all of that together. And then the fin flips in and fills in that gap. And now you could leave the leg like this if you want the uh, the foot to have claws on it. I feel like this is probably the best option to go with because it does give you the ankle tilt, but if you wanted to, you could rotate this around 180 degrees and get more of a non-monstrous robot toe, which I think that looks good. I like having that little bit of separation between the robot mode and shark mode but you don't get the ankle tilt functionality. It only tilts this way. So something to be aware of. Okay, let's do the other leg. Okay, this, this tail chunk is a little bit of a brat trying to uh, get that situated. Um, essentially you can't do it the same as this one, where this one you have it pointed up with the curve. Because of the way things are oriented you kind of have to go around that little corner and it's it's just obnoxious. But we're done. So there is the lower body. Now for the upper body I'm going to uh, pull this bit back and that will just sit on the butt. Kind of kind of pegs in, but not really, but that gives him a little butt plate. Now we detach the shark arms, and there's this little panel here that pops up. So that pegs into these bits here and keeps this from flopping around. So do that and bring this whole thing back, and we're going to take care of the backpack last. So all of that done. Split these and bring them down. Like so. Rotate 
take these down. And now these panels will unplug from here. And then swing down, swing out fists, and then the panel swings in and fills in the forearm. And there is one arm done. I like how clean and uh, effortless this bit of transformation is. It really does a good job of hiding the robot arms in the uh, shark mode. It's like, <laughs> wouldn't think to make the robot arms the neck, but it works. Okay. Uh, now, just because we need this room here, we're going to flip the head out. I, pref I would prefer to do it last, but eh. So, push this panel down so we can pop this up. And swing that around until it kind of clicks into place. So there we've got the head. And now for the backpack. So first want to swing this in and then kind of push this down just to kind of clean that up. And the arms will come down and should angle these down first. Okay. It's because of this bit here that kind of bangs into things. But uh, I'll just keep this out of the way. All right, so this comes down. <laughs> this is a train wreck. And these swing down, and these bits on the back of the arms here, these tabs will plug into the back. And you can kind of also see that these bits will line up with this uh, angle here. So plug that in, and then bring the hands up, and they will tab into the shark shoulder. And same deal here. Bring in, tab that in, and bring that up and tab it in, and there we go. And then we can bring this down and just kind of push that down a bit. And uh, you can leave it like this. I prefer to push up the fingers just to give it a little bit, it's, it's minimal, but it gives you a little bit less stuff sticking off the back. If you really wanted to, you could disconnect the arms, just have them hanging down like that to clean up the backpack to like to not have to stick out as far. But that is how that goes. And there we go. There is Leviathan in his robot mode. And this is a this is a ripper snapper. I believe that's undeniable. And this is a really cool ripper snapper. I like the look of this guy. You get a bit more red than we saw in the shark mode. But more than that, I really like how the shape of the shark completely changes and gives you what essentially looks like a relatively mundane, in terms of shape, silhouette, a relatively mundane looking robot man with some fin bits and angles and stuff hanging off that kind of give it more of a nautical theme. But yeah, this is a really cool figure. I like this a lot. The transformation, uh, despite the irritation with the shins, the transformation is actually really fun and clever. And yeah, I just really like this. And also, you've got a couple of different things you can do with this guy, which we'll get into a little bit later, that I really that kind of sold me on this. But yeah, this is cool. I like how his uh, like he's got kind of like bulky shin boots, but it's mostly down here and on his back. I think the overall shape's nice. I think the colors are great too. I like how you've got this off-white, but then also light gray in a few places, silver accents, and of course the blue. I don't know, there's something about those color combinations. Really cool. And yes, you've got the shark head and junk hanging off the back, but it's Ripper Snapper. That's kind of to be expected. Now with the feet turned around, like I said, you don't get the ankle tilt, but they look a little bit more like normal robot feet. But if you really wanted to, you could turn them around very easily and make him look more like that, which it's fine. And I like having the functionality of the ankle tilt, but there is a reason why I prefer to do it this way. But I do like all of these little angled bits sticking off that kind of look like fins. These bits on the shins kind of look like scales. And I do think it's also really cool how the tail splits apart 
and forms just an interesting kind of knee and shin design on the legs. That's very cool. Uh, there is some basic detailing on the thighs, some nice detailing in the midsection here, which this is all newly revealed stuff because it was on the underside of the shark mode. And also the arms are really cool too. I like having these kind of shark fins up on the sides with the silver turbines almost in the shoulders and these little vent looking things and the blue details around the gauntlets, but then you've got this nice silver wiring detail in there too. It's pretty cool. And now for the head. Uh, the head is not stock. Anyone who's familiar with this figure may have realized that. I could not help myself when I got this guy. Uh, his head is normally entirely blue out of the box. Like there's, uh, the eyes are pink and can see like the light piping block back there uh, it doesn't really it kind of works a little bit but you also have this giant backpack with the shark head just sitting behind his head so that does block some of the light piping possibilities uh, but as i said out of the box the head is just blue plastic with the piping block in it which is fine but i really wanted to see him with uh, face that stood out a bit. I was originally going to go with yellow because that's more traditional for uh, Ripper Snapper's face. At least I think it's the toy that did the yellow face. I could be wrong. I just associate like the blue helmet with the yellow face with Ripper Snapper. But as I thought about it and got the opinion of a professional artist, because <laughs> thankfully Diana can uh, offer some really helpful insight when it comes to these kinds of decisions, decided that something a little bit more muted would work a little bit better because there's nothing super bright on this guy. Like the red accents definitely are brighter than the rest of the stuff going on here, but they're not, you know, neon or anything like that. The yellow would have been a little too bright. So we ended up going with gold. So I painted his face gold. I just took the head apart and very delicately went in there to get the face and uh, try not to get the inside of the helmet and then put it all back together. And I think this looks fantastic. Under close scrutiny, when you get close, uh, it could have been better, particularly the paint that I was using. It was a little bit goopy. So when you get really in there, it kind of looks like he's a little bit wrinkly. But if you're not overanalyzing really up close, it's just a gold face. And I think that works so good. It pops so nicely against everything else and it still kind of feels classic ripper snapper so yeah i, I really like that little change <laughs> now as you saw for the head articulation the head's on a ball joint so you get a lot of really nice expressiveness can look pretty far up and pretty far down and some pretty nice tilts and of course the arms can go all the way around and they're on ratchets which is really nice yeah there we go and they can go up on this hinge as well as up on this hinge so you can get some pretty decent up so uh those ratchets are pretty solid as you can hear <laughs> you get a bicep swivel and an elbow bend that goes past 90. there is a wrist swivel and the fingers do open but they are a little bit tight but they do open you also get a waist swivel which is friction but it does turn and then you also get an ab crunch which I'm assuming is because this guy becomes an arm but I don't care I'll take it uh, the hip skirts can move out of the way a little bit and the butt flap can move all the way out of the way and you can kick forward almost 90 back Pretty much to 90 and then out uh, yeah out past 90 there is a thigh swivel and then the legs there's a double joint ratchet in the knees if you move the top one you can get about that much curl just slightly over 90 if you move the bottom one it's also about 90 it just sits a little bit lower i don't know if you can get 
anything further than that, even if you use the two joints in, in uh, tandem. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could pull this out of the way. Let's see if that gets you anything more significant. Uh, not really. So, not really worth it to uh, try and detransform things. And also, if you don't like this gap back here, you can pop this up and just push it back into where it sits for uh, shark mode. So you can clean up that gap if you want. I prefer to leave it down because you get some nice detail revealed there, and also it just frees up the knee bend for more articulation. And then as we saw with the feet, you, it's the same as the shark feet where you get the up and down on the heel and the toe. You get a teeny tiny bit of forward and backward, but because of how this is all locked in there, it's not really going to make much of a difference. And then you get that rotation, and depending on which way you have the feet pointing, you've got ankle tilt to the inside or to the outside. So yeah, uh, the articulation on this guy is pretty solid. He's fun to mess with, <laughs> fun to transform, he looks cool. Uh, now, for the other stuff you can do with this guy, uh, this is kind of like a fan mode -y thing, but I still think it's really cool. I prefer for this, this is why I like to rotate the feet around for the robot mode, because you can give him his monster feet, then open up this, and I want to uh, pull this back so we can swing his head back down into body, and then bring this up, use that ab crunch, and you can basically give him like a like a monster shark man mode. I love it. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but I love that he could do this, and I think it works even better if you give him like the monster claws. That's just really fun. This is actually what sold me on this figure. Even though I don't really display him that way, just being able to like having the knowledge that I could is enough. <laughs> this guy's fun. Then of course there is his gun, which uh, I, I think it's a pretty decent looking gun. I like how it stores in the shark mode too. I think it's pretty much out of the way and it kind of works. Uh, this looks like it probably combines with other weapons, but I don't have any other weapons to combine them with. And this just uh, pegs into either hand. I'm just going to go with this hand because the fingers are open and close the fingers around that and now he's got his gun for shooting what is it the uh the technobots that the terracons were fighting all the time i think there is all of that and this guy is very cool like you need me to tell you that like i haven't been saying that this whole time now when he gets by pedal back a little bit more. When he gets bipedal, he does get a little bit bigger, but he's not huge. To the head, he's a little bit taller than a mainline Voyager. So I guess this would roughly put him at leader size. I don't know. It's just in case you're curious. So he's not what I'd call huge. I don't know if this qualifies as masterpiece scale, and I honestly don't care, but it's a pretty decent size. I mean, it's TFC, so of course. And obviously he's bigger than like older TFC stuff. Unfortunately I don't currently have any older TFC stuff on hand because I was a fool and uh, briefly had Hercules for a bit and then sold the set off and I seriously regret doing that. But uh, yeah, bigger than uh, older TFC stuff. It's most older TFC stuff. Okay, when I said I didn't have any older TFC stuff to compare him to, uh, I was accidentally lying. I forgot I had this guy tucked away. But in fairness, TFC Hydrant from their uh, original Defensor thing, from this is from several years back now, he's a torso bot. So he's going to be bigger than any of the limbs. And let's keep going just a little bit more. So for anyone who's curious about how he stacks up to another in-progress combiner team Limbot. Uh, here he is with Ocular Max slash Mastermind Creations Medicus. 
and Medicus is a little bit taller, but I feel like Medicus in general is a little bit bigger than uh, the average, like even some of the Ocular Max limb bots. Not necessarily bigger than Probus or Brawl, but he's not small, so the fact that he's bigger than him, I think, it's kind of... I, I don't know where I'm going with this. That will do it for TFC Leviathan from their uh, Satan, I think. They're calling Abominus Satan. As I said, this figure is very cool. I think as a standalone toy, this is worth getting. From what I can tell, there's no intrusive uh, arbitrary engineering that is meant for the combined mode that gets in the way of the shark or robot mode. So if you wanted this guy as a standalone figure, you wouldn't really have to worry about combiner engineering getting in the way of the fun. The only thing that he really has that's for the combined mode that we didn't touch on is the, uh, the stuff in here to open up the combiner port. So yeah, uh, this pulls out and swings down, and this swings in to get out of the way, and there you've got the uh, combiner port. But as I said, when you look at this guy as a standalone figure, that engineering is not a problem at all. Because just a tiny bit of stuff in the chest. It does not get in the way of anything else. And this guy's just really cool. I love the look. I love both modes. Both modes are fun. The transformation in between them is fun. And I absolutely adore the fact that you can turn him into a wear shark. But that is enough about what I think what do you all think of TFC's Leviathan, or Ripper Snapper in general, or the whole TFC Abominus Combiner? Like, how do you think that's coming along? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and remember, it's just toys. They're fun, but they're not that big a deal. Mm -hmm.